Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Mike here at Game From Scratch, and we got a lot of development updates from Microsoft because they just released, well, basically everything. We've got a new version of .NET, we got a new version of C Sharp, we got a new version of F Sharp, we got a new version of Visual Studio. And so let's just jump in, because like I said, we got a lot to cover here. We're gonna start things off with .NET 7. Now, this release has a bunch to it. Now, the nice thing is since .NET, I believe it was five, we've seen more of a universal cross-platform uh, programming API. A lot of the stuff that was kind of uh, disparate or only on individual platforms, we're now getting in a very cross-platform nature. It's also more and more of an open source project. So you see here, they've got 28,000 contributions by 8,900 contributors. So definitely uh, Microsoft pivoting to open source with the .NET framework has been a success. Lots of improvements here across the board, but we're just gonna basically look at the highlights. Now, again, this is all cross-platform. So you've got Windows, Mac OS, and Linux support here. Um, Packages are available out there if you wish to go ahead and update. And we're just going to basically look at what is new in .NET 7 itself. Now, the top level thing is a lot of the underlying libraries have been updated to version 7. Uh, we have ASP.NET Core, which is their web development framework. The Entity Framework Core, which is a data mapping or ORM solution, is a way of basically uh, representing data and code in the interface between them. Very oversimplified way of describing it. And then we have not one, not two, but three user interface libraries. Uh, we have WP and Windows Forms. I do not think that these are fully cross-platform, uh, but .NET MAUI, that is the future. That's the um, multi-something-something UI library. We'll, we'll get back to that one in just a second. So MAUI is here. I think it was released in preview in .NET 6, but if you're looking for a cross-platform UI programming uh, library, MAUI is there for you. Uh, we have a bunch of other things coming up here as well. This one we're going to revisit when we get to Visual Studio, but we now have native support for ARM64. Uh, this is getting increasingly important. More and more devices are shipping with ARM. ARM is coming to the desktop more and more. We've got more Chromebooks powered by ARM devices. We've got surfaces that are ARM-based, and of course, various different phones, etc., that are out there. Uh, Enhanced.NET support in Linux, which is always nice for Linux developers. Uh, we got the C-Sharp 11 release. We'll get to that in just a second. We got improvements for doing uh, native cloud apps, uh, continued performance improvements, little things across the board, little fixes like that. And you can build cross-platform mobile and desktop apps from the same code base, which is, of course, always the dream. And those are the ones as a, in the game development world that you always like to see, which is numerous perf improvements. We're going to get to one very specific one in just a second. Uh, but you can see, again, it's .NET is unified for no matter what you're doing. If you're doing web, games, uh, mobile, uh, artificial intelligence, etc. Uh, .NET is meant to be like a unified base set of libraries for doing all of those things with one code base. Uh, again, ARM64 support is definitely one of the biggies here. Uh, again, going back up to the earlier thing, we do have the MAUI. A lot of people have been waiting on MAUI. Uh, so it is the multi-platform app UI. This is a cross-platform UI library. Um, and .NET 7 was a big, so it was um, released earlier on in another version as a preview. Uh, so it's, they've graduated from preview to stable on Mac, uh, which is, I guess was a nice thing. Uh, it is supported through uh, May of 2024, by the way. So you can see oh, down here, this is an example of the kind of UI you can create using uh, MAUI. So if you want to check that one out, that is obviously a big release here. Another thing that came from uh, .NET 7 release uh, is this. So we now have native AOT deployment. This is going to be big in the world of game development eventually. Uh, you've been able to build AOT in a number of different ways in a number of different capacities. This is a new system that they're coming up with. Uh, there are definitely limitations here. Uh, so this is re this release is targeted towards console type applications and only a very limited subset of libraries support native AOT compilation in .NET 7. So this is one of those ones kind of get excited for it later on down the road. But what it allows you to do is compile your .NET application uh, to native machine code. There's no IL there or no intermediate language. There's no VRM, there's no runtimes, no um, nothing in the middle there. So um, AOT compilation is going to be a very interesting thing going forward. And again, AOT compilation is actually a requirement for deploying to um, Mac, uh, uh, sorry, um, iOS platforms as it stands. Uh, also, you can uh, target a very specific runtime. So you can say, I want to build this as a native application for Windows ARM64 platform. Actually, right now, it is actually quite limited in what it can support, and that is Windows and Linux only, and it's x86, oh, sorry, x64 and ARM64 platforms only. But native AOT deployment is new to .NET 7, and I'm assuming 
assuming, by the way, that these are worded, that eventually you're going to have the full library of support, all the players, different platforms, and so on. Uh, so the benefits of native AOT is uh, with high number of deployed instances, such as cloud infrastructure, hyperscale services, it is currently not supported with AFP.net, only console apps. So it's a very specific use case here. But generally, things start up faster, use less memory when they are compiled native. Uh, and then we get into the world of C Sharp 11. There's also uh, F Sharp, I think it was seven, it might have been eight. Uh, F Sharp is functional programming language. It's not really relevant to like 99% of us. So I'm not going to be covering that specifically. Uh, we're just going to do a quick overview of what is in C Sharp. One of the nice things is UTF-8 string literals. When you're dealing with the web uh, or pretty much everything else outside of .NET, UTF-8 stands tends to be the standard encoding format. Internally in .NET, everything is a UTF-16 string. So there is a conversion process going on every single time. So if you want to get rid of that overhead and performance cost, uh, you can now use the U8 prefix uh, and work with uh, string literals. We also have uh, raw string literals where you use the uh, triple quotes. You can see this in action right here. And there you can see the, the end result of that encoding uh, going on as well. Uh, so it makes it really easy to paste in, maintain, and read at a glance what literals contain. Uh, we have also got the ability to abstract over static members. I love the way this was described. How do you abstract over operations that are inherently static, such as operators? The traditional answer is, Poorly. <laughs> I like that. Uh, so in C Sharp 11, they released support for static virtual members in interfaces, uh, which was a preview feature in C Sharp 10. With this, you can now define a very simple uh, mathematical interface. Uh, so again, the new um, abstract operators, definitely nice. A little bit more details about how they actually work. Uh, we also have a list patterns. Uh, so it is a way of um, with list patterns, you can apply patterns recursively to the individual elements of list-like inputs or to a range of them. Uh, so you can see a generic algorithm above rewritten as a recursive uh, method using list patterns. I actually find that a little bit confusing to read personally, but if you want to read more about list patterns, uh, it is available right there. And then one of the, I think, kind of nicest new features in my humble opinion is a required member. This is basically saying when an object is initialized, this needs to be initialized. This member needs to be initialized or it is an error. So here you can see that first name and last name are tagged as being required, whereas middle name is not, it's an optional value. So what you see here, um, if you throw in, if you do initialization, but you only do first name, but not also last name, you're going to get an error because you have not, uh, the, the tagged uh, property as required was not fulfilled, and then kaboom. So there's more details of the uh, C Sharp 11 release and way beyond what I'm gonna get into. I will have all of these things linked below. So if you wanna jump into them, do check the linked article. All of the links will be there for you. And we also, of course, have Visual Studio 17.4 release. Now, the biggest thing about Visual Studio 17.4 is all of the stuff we just talked about. It has support for uh, .NET 7. It's got support for C Sharp 11. It's got support for the new version of F Sharp. There's a couple of other things that are relevant in this particular release. The big thing, of course, here is this is the first um, generally available release to support ARM64 platforms. So if you are building for ARM64, this release was wonderful for you. And on the top of ARM64, if you're doing game development, uh, very specifically, the game development um, workflow is supported for ARM64. So uh, that is nice. You can work in C++ plus for ARM64 native applications. All the game development workflows are there as are the Node, WinApp SDK, Windows SDK, uh, Visual Studio SDK, and the Universal Windows um, platform. Is that still a thing? Uh, anyways, those are um, all supported in this one. We got a couple of other things here as well. Uh, you have multiple Git repositories can be active at once. That'll be nice for some people, certainly. Uh, we got a number of little fixes across the board. You can now roll back Visual Studio updates, and these things can cause problems for sure. Uh, so that is definitely a nice uh, new feature we've got going on there as well. And we've got uh, C++ Gradle support, if you are working on the Android platform. Of course, probably the big thing here is the .NET 7 in there. Uh, there are also some improvements very specifically to uh, C++ developers. A lot of it also revolves, of course, around ARM64 support. Uh, but MS uh, Visual Studio, uh, sorry, Visual C++ definitely had some improvements as well. Um, more minor in nature, some around CMake, etc. So if you are a C++ developer, there is stuff in there as well. Uh, they also have some improvements to the uh, VCP KG, which is their package manager. It's a wonderful way of um, getting rid of some of the complexity of dealing with CMake and libraries and problems and all of that stuff. And we also got some improvements on the game development front specifically. And given this channel, I will go through this paragraph. Uh, working hard on Unreal Engine integration in Visual Studio as of 17.4, you can now see which Unreal Engine blueprint references use and inherit from C++ classes 
devices directly in the IDE to enable this feature, uh, ensure that IDE support for Unreal Engine component is enabled in the VS installer. Uh, so nice improvement in that regard as well. And we're going to see more coming in 17.5. So again, lots of improvements here. We have the .NET MAUI UIs available now. We have .NET 7 now. We have C Sharp 11. We got a brand new version of Visual Studio, which supports ARM64 development, a little bit of C++ improvements, and just basic performance improvements across the board. We have the nascent support for AOT compilation for C Sharp 11. A lot of really exciting stuff in these particular releases. And I'm curious what you think. What do you think of uh, the entire .NET ecosystem as being open source now? Do you, do you think, consider it a legit open source project at this point in time, or are you still wary at this point? Um, I think it's I think it's interesting. I think for the most part, pretty good release. I have seen some talk on Twitter about people having issues. Uh, one I saw was about uh, finding solutions being broken. Uh, so, you know, there's always problems with these releases as well. So if you're working on a project and you don't want to upgrade right now, maybe not a terrible idea. But if you want .NET 7, you want C Sharp 11 uh, or ARM64 support, hey, you got a lot of that today. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.